I want to say quickly uh, thank you to all the, the friends who are here watching me this morning, braving the, the, this afternoon, braving the snow and all the, uh, the weather. Without them, without their <coughs> love in my life, I certainly would not be standing here where I am today. So thank you to all of you. Uh, it was probably early in my high school career that I had a deep desire to go away to college. I didn't care where that was, I wanted to go far, far away. But as the time came to make that decision to go away to college, I realized I was probably a bit more of a mama's boy than my macho male ego would have liked to have admitted. So the thought of going away to college was terrifying. Uh, and I started at a Bible college here in Little Kentucky. After two years, I ended up transferring to Old Roberts in Tulsa, which is about 700 miles from the Louisville area. That's pretty far from home for a mama's boy. And I uh, wasn't really happy that God led me to go that far away. I wasn't really pleased with the Lord at that moment. But I couldn't escape this fact that I just knew that I knew that I knew that's where God wanted me. And so I went through the first couple of months there and all the, the, the struggles and adjustments away from home for the first time. I was mad at God. I had questions. And I had plenty of doubts. And that's my story, but I would imagine many of us at many times have our doubts in this journey of faith. As where God takes us and how he moves and leads us. Questions of, do you, do you really know what you're doing? Is this really the vision? A lot of questions. We are not alone in those doubts. The passage my father read, all takes place after Jesus' resurrection. And we see doubts, even in disciples. The first part there that Dad read, uh, verse 19 tells us that on the first day of the week, the disciples were gathered in a room. That would imply this is a Sunday that is here. What's happened before the verse my dad read is we see a woman named Mary Magdalene, and we see the Apostle Peter and a disciple who remains nameless. They go and see the empty tomb. Jesus is risen. He's gone. And later on, Jesus will actually come to Mary Magdalene, and they have this encounter, and they talk. And so the scripture implies it's later that same day that Jesus appears to the rest of the disciples. He comes in what the author says, the room with the doors that are shut. Kind of give us the implication that the disciples are a bit scared, a little bit nervous. Otherwise, why would the doors be shut? Why would John give us that piece of information? They're a little bit afraid. And Jesus appears in it, it says in verse 19. I would imagine they're probably very startled to see Jesus just appear in a room with doors that are shut. And they're very startled. Jesus comes in and his first words to them are, Peace be with you. And what beautiful words the disciples are hearing at this point. I'm sure the disciples are nervous and scared of the sudden appearance of a man in a room where the doors are shut. That's got to be one thing. But I wonder how the disciples feel inside right now. After Jesus' arrest, they really had a hand situation in a stellar kind of way. We see Peter's denial of Christ. We see the disciples scattering the wind as Jesus was arrested in the garden. And now they're in a room, locked, scared of what if the Jewish authorities come here. And Jesus says, peace be with you. What beautiful words to hear from Christ at that moment. Reassuring them in this time. For, for myself, worry tends to be something that I can uh, definitely do a lot. Worry about, will this work out? Will that work out? Am I making the right decision here? Is this the right plan? And uh, one of the gifts God gave me is my beautiful wife. who's such a calming presence in all the, the worry and frame that I can, I can get going. And she's so peaceful. I started worrying about things. She says, oh, it's fine. It'll all work out. It'll be okay. And that has this calming presence on me. As wonderful as that is, how much more is it to hear from our Lord, Jesus, peace be with you. When we all sin, when we were, when we do things we shouldn't do, when we haven't lived and followed Christ in a, in a way that's worthy of Him, He doesn't say a word of condemnation to us. You messed up, you blew it. He says, peace be with you. Wonderful. So He says this, and then He shows the disciples His hands. And the scars on the side. And then he says, once again, peace to you. The second time he says that he falls over with the commission. He says, peace to you as the Father sent me, so I am sending you. And then Jesus breathes the Holy Spirit. And there's a sense in this commission of them 
to be said in the world that this is something for us as well. It wasn't just for the disciples. It's for all who believe. It's for all who have the Holy Spirit. We have this task to go in the world and share this good news with others. This sets our God apart from every other God. Are we worthy of this call? Am I worthy to stand here? As Dad said, I, I wrestled with this call and mission at age 17. And, and uh, growing up as a PK was great, but it wasn't anything that I personally wanted to do with my life. I saw my dad work long hours and all that, and he didn't get paid really well for it. I'm going to have a nice house and a nice ride if I'm making a preacher's salary. And like, this is not what I wanted, but as I moved through the process and kind of began to mature and grow up, I still wrestled, but it was a different kind of wrestling. The pressure, the responsibility of being a spiritual leader over a group of people. And I know myself. I have my problems. I have my baggage. I have my hang-ups. I say, God, if, if you really knew me, you wouldn't want me for this. I wouldn't be good at that. This is not for me. I mean, but if we're honest, are any of us worthy of this? Were the disciples worthy? Peter denies Christ. They scatter like the wind at Jesus' arrest. These guys walk with Jesus, knew Jesus, touched Jesus. Even they didn't handle well. Are any of us really worthy of this? Yes, we are. Because this is a passage after Jesus' resurrection. Because Jesus died and rose again, defeating the power of sin, death, and hell forever, is there anything about me that I should be here? No, but because of that, because of His grace, I can be here and do this. And this call, this commission of God that He sends the disciples and also to us, is something I can do. 